Good afternoon, folks. We're going to talk about how the difference between the War of 1812 and how it pretty much all progressed into a war compared to how Russia and Ukraine is kind of going on. But to get there, we're going to have to talk about how the War of 1812 began. And that would be start with Jefferson's second term. But it all began with the Essex decision. In 1805, the Essex decision was a British judge rules that British naval ships have the right to seize American merchant ships unless the owner of the ship can prove that the final decision of the ship is a U.S. port. The British also claimed the right to search the ships for British deserters and to impress or force them back into British naval service. The decision allows the British Navy to impede U.S. trade with France or Spain, which are both at war with Britain. That there kind of said that because both France and and Spain were our ally during during the Revolutionary War. Because the Pensacola campaign down south during the American Revolutionary War, Spain was pretty much well, battling that. And up north, at the Yorktown campaign, that was all the French. That's where the French were on our side at. They blocked the. They didn't allow the British to get any troops to come in or exit. They needed fresh troops, and they wouldn't allow that, and pretty much will stop them from coming in and out. Now, what this export is and everything, goods that were coming in, they didn't want them. Now, how the original Revolutionary War is, not just we wanted more independence from them, but it pretty much will just states like. They wanted all this to go that way, and they wanted all this to go that way. So, <laughs> then we get in January of January 23rd, 1806, Secretary of State James Madison reports that British are infringing on American rights to conduct commerce and violating American rights as a neutral nation. He also reports that American sailors are being taken prisoner on British ships and impressed to serve under the British flag. So technically, they're making taking them prisoner, even though they're not even a country at war with Britain. Making them into a country at war with Britain. Right now, the Napoleonic War is going on right now. So technically... Neither side's really taking a side right now. In response to the Senate pass, a resolution condemning the British impressment of the American seamen on February 12th. On April 12th, on April 18th, excuse me, 1806, after, British, after Britain ignores complaints about the seizure of American ships and the pre president of American sailors, Congress passes a non importation act banning a large number of British goods from the American market, including hemp, flax, brass, and tin. Some good number of things going that way. On November 21st, 1806, Napoleon issues the Berlin Decree, responding to a British blockade of the European coast from the city of Brest, France, to the mouth of the Albre River in the present-day Germany. Under the decree, France begins to totally blockade a total blockade of the British Isles and forbids any commerce or communications with them. The decree also authorizes the seizure of all ships and cargo headed for Britain, including all American ships. So it's almost like another second war going on 
with France, but not necessarily a war. We just didn't really, we would get captured as, just like them. And on December 31st, 1806, in spring 1806, Jefferson had instructed William Penke and James Monroe to negotiate a treaty with Britain that would provide an end to the imprisonment of American sailors, restoration of U.S. trade rights and Caribbean and payment of all American ships seized after the Essex decision. Britain offers only a slight compromise on the Caribbean trade, but nothing else. Monroe and Pinky agreed to the treaty, but Jefferson, embarrassed by its weak terms, does not submit it to Congress. The Monroe Pinky tr Treaty is never ratified. So obviously, they had a little bit of negotiation going on here, but nothing to real big significance. Then on June 22nd, 1807, the British frigate Leopard halts the U.S. frigate Chesapeake, claiming that four sailors aboard the American ship are British deserters. When the commander of the American ship refuses to surrender, the men of the Leopard open fires, killing three and wounding 18, before taking the four accused deserters on July 2nd. In response, the Chesapeake Leopard incident Jefferson orders all British warships to leave American waters in turn. The British orders increased imprisonments, imprisonments excuse me, of British seamen from American government and other neutral ships. Now that kind of turned into a little bit of a war, but not like a complete war outbreak. Now on eight now December eighteenth or twenty first, eighteen oh seven, Jefferson recommends that Congress issued an embargo against Great Britain and France. Despite Pharaoh's opposition, Congress passes the Embargo Act, actually halting virtually all trade with foreign nations and banning American ships from sailing into foreign ports. It also requires domestic coastal traffic to post bonds with twice worth twice the value of their cargo to ensure that they do not land anywhere other than a U.S. port. The Embargo Act proves to be, well, obviously a disaster. Upon its passage, a vast smuggling network is established with goods often being carried by land and sea to and from Canada. American ships that are at sea when the act takes effect stay at sea and continue to trade with corporation from the British government. The embargo only benefits the British because its merchants no longer have to compete with those from the United States. The act is also useful to France. Napoleon issues the Bagnon Decree, ordering the seizure of all U.S. ships entering ports in France, Italy, and Hanasic towns in present-day Germany. Napoleon reasons that with the Embargo Act, in effect, any U.S. ships found in European ports must be British vessels with false documents. His savvy strategy costs U.S. warships 10 million in cargo. So pretty much, well, a war going on here. But neutral war, not, it's kind of like a cold war. A very cold war right now, not necessarily like anyone really going to war with one another, trying to kill one another, neither side really killing, but cold. No one's really declared war on one another yet, but an embargo war. Congress bans, then we come on to, like, something kind of slavery type of thing. January 1st, 1808, Congress bans African slave trade and orders that slave ships be seized. The fate of slaves on board those ships to be left to the state in which the ship is captured. Despite the law 
and illegal slave trade will continue up until the U.S. Civil War in 1861. Obviously, we know what happened there. March 1808, Secretary of State James Madison easily wins presidency. We all know how that worked out. And then, pretty much, well, a lot of these things that pretty much will force a lot of things onto this is pretty much, well, a war. I mean, but then March 1809, reversing the course, Congress repeals the Embargo Act after it had been in effect for 14 months. It becomes clear to Jefferson that the act will not force compliance from either Britain or France. In addition, public outcry over the Embargo Act becomes overwhelming. A milder law is passed called the Non-Intercourse Act, which allows unfettered trade with all nations other than Great Britain and France. Three years later, the United States will be at war with Britain. That's pretty much well how that all works. And we'll kind of continue the conversation with the James Madison. Because that's technically where it all begins at, is with James Madison. I mean, if you want to talk about, compare the two wars, about how it all began, it will be under James Madison. So, War of 1812... Pre-War of 1812 versus the War of 1812, technically even the Ukraine-Russia War, technically is what we're dealing with here. With that being said, comment down below how you think that situation would be nowadays. With that being said, I'm out of here. Peace.